Now the lady who owns this car is a new customer. She had taken it to one of these chain discount auto repair shops. Some young kid was working on it. When she got it back, it still smelled exactly the same. She knew something was up, that they didn't do a very good job fixing it. They said they put a valve cover gasket in. Well, we're gonna take it apart, see if they actually did, or if they totally ripped her off, or probably even worse, they put the gasket on crooked or something and it was leaking even worse. So let's take it apart. It's a relatively easy job and I just got a few of my tools in this plastic case. I don't have to keep running back and forth. Basically you just need the sockets, a ratchet, and a little extension. And the first thing we're going to do with the 10 millimeter socket is take off the stupid beauty cover. It's just in the way. Really doesn't serve any purpose other than making it more annoying to repair. Take the two bolts off. Get out of the way. Then we're going to remove the ignition coils because they're in the way. It's another 10 millimeter. There's four of them. One, two, three, four. And we can take them all out easily. And I put the screws up here so I don't lose them. And if you're the forgetful sort, take a picture of it with your phone. Then you'll know which one goes where and you won't screw up putting it back together. Oh, we'll just move them out of the way. Put them over here. Now they're out of the way. Then we got to take these stupid hoses off. Just twist this. Off comes a PCV hose. And there's another hose here. On this end, we squeeze a little clamp. This one's a little stuck, so we'll pry it with a screwdriver. That's the easy way to get them off. Now that's out of the way. And we just have to remove all the bolts that hold it in place. And handy enough. They're all 10 millimeters too. We'll just loosen them one at a time. There's a whole bunch of them. They're all over the place. Don't forget the ones in the middle and the ones in the back. Can't even see back there, so we'll get the old flashlight out so we don't miss any of them. Now they're all loose and we'll take them off. Can remove them one at a time. I'll put them in the front here so I'll remember where I put them. <laughs> Once you loosen them, they're real easy to get off by hand. Just look close, make sure they're all gone. All right, nothing but holes now. Then we'll pull it off. Off we pull. And it comes off. They put a new gasket, it's supple silicone. But they twisted it and had it crooked, so it was leaking down. Now we're not going to make that mistake. So I use this 3M weather strip glue. When I get the new gasket, I'm going to put a little glue on the inside. If you notice, when I pulled this off, it just fell out, not being glued in. When you put it down, it pinched sideways and then leaked. You glue certain spots, push it in, let it dry for about half an hour, then it won't slip and pinch like it did with them. Then while we're waiting for the gasket to come, they're delivering it, we're going to wipe the edge off to get all the oil off that fell through when it was pinched. The whole way around. Get it nice and clean. While we're waiting, we'll see this thing has 72,348 miles. Which for a Toyota RAV4 is nothing, even though it's 12 years old. It's barely broken in, and when we look at the top of the inside of the engine, it's in immaculate shape. Cams are all clean, there's no sludge buildup or anything. Everything's nice and shiny. This car's been taken care of, and the timing chain, tight as can be which is a good thing. It was a much better design when they went to timing chains. Originally they had timing belts that were rubber would break and they were a pain in the butt to change. These have chains, chains that already take care of it. They can last basically forever. Since the chain's inside the engine, the cover's off so we see inside, it's bathed in oil the whole time so it stays lubricated and it can last indefinitely. Now we have the gasket, what we'll do is we'll put little bits of this weather trim sealer and little parts every once in a while. Little here, little in the middle, little here, then a couple dops in the middle, little here, and a little there. Put that on tight so it doesn't leak or dry out. Then you just get the whole gasket assembly. Check out which way it goes. It goes this way. And we'll start putting it on and realize this goes in the middle so we'll push that in a little. Then you just feed the whole thing around. Press it in so it snaps. You want it in tight. That's nice and tight. And make sure it's all in its groove the whole way around. The previous person didn't do it. This fell off when I picked it up because it was just in loose. When he put it on, it twisted. This way, it can't twist. You make sure it's nice and solid in with the 3M weather stripping and the middle too, and then let it dry about an hour. Okay, now it's dry. You can see, you can hang it upside down. It's not gonna fall off and mess up like the previous guy's work did. Then we simply place it back in place. 
line up the studs, get all the wires out of the way. So a little wire stuck over here. Then we'll start with the big bolts in the middle because you want to tighten it from the middle out. And we want to do all the middle ones, so we'll put this one here, and there's one in the back, and we tighten from the middle out. We'll do the back middle one, get it finger tight, then the front middle one, finger tight, then the inside two, we get them finger tight, then we do all the other bolts working our way out. Then once you snug them all up from the inside out, you then get them tied with a ratchet from the inside out. So we'll start on the back, we'll get it tight, Touches and then just a little snug. The same thing here. Get it so it's snug. Then we'll do the inside one here, the other inside one, then we do the outside ones, and the other outside one, and the top one here, and then the top one on the other side, and then the last two. Now we know they're nice and tight, and we know they didn't bend and twist and leaking like before because we had glued parts in so it didn't fall down and overlap. Then we find the hose that's over here somewhere. There it is. We'll put that back on. Squeeze that clamp. On it goes. Then we'll go over to the other side. Do the PCV hose. Squeeze the clamp. Put it on. Then all the ignition coils go back on. Get them out of the hole they fell into. That one goes there. It goes here. And that one goes there. And we put the four 10 millimeter bolts back in. You gotta wiggle to line them up. Then we just tighten them all up. Then we get the ratchet out and finish them off. Thing we're gonna check. The oil cap. See the old one? The gasket's pretty much flush. It's worn out. Here's a new one with a new gasket. You can see this gasket's gonna seal better than this one. So we're gonna change the cap too. Now people often don't think about the cap, but that dumb gasket can wear out. So it's on, spin it, get it nice and snug. And of course, you don't know how much oil is lost, so we'll check the oil. Well, it's not even on the dipstick, so we're going to have to add some oil. So we'll add some oil, put in one quart first, and as we measure it, we can see it's on the bottom dot. That means it needs a whole quart. So in goes another quart. So we'll check it again, and now it's on the top dot, it's full. Screw the cap back in, make sure that gasket doesn't fall off. And of course, we're going to start it up, check for oil leaks. And voila, no more leaks, all dry. Now this Toyota overheated. This guy took it to the Toyota dealer. Toyota dealer charged them $531. And all they did was change the radiator hoses and put new coolant in. Talk about a ripoff. But the worst thing is, it didn't fix the car. It's still overheating. I see that so much these days. Everybody's in a hurry to make money. Just change the hoses and put coolant in it for $531. They obviously did not road test the car. He got it back, it's still overheating. So I look at the bill and I look at the car. It's got 200,000 something miles on it. What's on the bill? They didn't even mention that they replaced the thermostat. So they didn't change the thermostat. Thermostats are closed when it's cold. They open up to flow when the engine's warmed up. 200 something thousand miles, they'll often wear out right? Common sense. They charged them 531 bucks to change some hoses and coolant. They certainly should have changed the thermostat. Now that just shows poor training, poor quality of work, and this was at the dealership. Let's hope that changing this thermostat is going to fix it. And if it does, I'm going to advise my customer to go back to the dealer, demand all of his money back, because it's just total fraud. They didn't do the simple thing. These young mechanics that a lot of places have, they don't even analyze the stuff. And they certainly don't road test it when they're done. They don't know it's fixed. And he fool knows. If the thing overheats and you don't see any obvious problems, change the thermostat. It could stick shut, right? So we're going to try that, see if it fixes it. First, we'll put a pan underneath to catch the coolant so we don't waste it. Now, in this case, the thermostat is hiding. It's down here. There it is. Right here. It's got a bolt in the top. And a bolt on the bottom. You can see the bottom bolt there. We're going to take it out and change it. Now, it may be out of sight, but it shouldn't be out of mind in a good mechanic. That's the first thing they should have changed. I don't know what they're using at these dealerships, what kind of mechanics they're hiring, if they don't even do something that simple. 10 millimeter socket, put a little extension on, and unbolt it. Yeah, there isn't much working room, but, and it's on tight, but it's not that big of a deal. There's one 10 millimeter bolt. Put it here so I don't lose it. 
then we'll do the other one. And the bottom one's harder to get, so we're gonna use a deep well 10 millimeter. Where there's a well, there's a way. If it sticks in deep, just use a deep well socket to get over the thread. Not that easy to see, but it's not that hard of a job. Now I can get it with my bare finger. And here comes number two. Then we just pull on it, and out it comes. There's the thermostat. Now, judging by the corrodedness of the gasket, this is the original one. Why, oh, why they didn't replace the thermostat is beyond me. I guess it must have been a young mechanic who doesn't know that much about cars. Didn't think, oh, thermostat, it's a car with 200-something thousand miles. Try the cheapest part that could possibly fix it. No, $500 worth of hoses that he probably didn't need, and it didn't fix the problem because they didn't even road test it. A new thermostat and gasket, and we'll put it in. You just push it back in the hole right there. There's the new one pushed in its hole. Then you just put the thermostat cover on it and bolt it up. Just slide it back on and bolt it on. First, put them on finger tight so the gasket doesn't slip. You don't want the gasket slipping. Then you can get the deep wall socket 10 millimeter, flip it, and tighten it up. Then you put coolant back in. We'll get our pan. And it looks to me like they even lied about new coolant. This coolant is pretty old and dirty looking. So I'm draining it all out. And I'm going to put new coolant in. Now you notice this is Xerox. But it's Asian vehicle one. You don't have to go buy the expensive stuff at Toyota. Realize Toyota does not make coolant. They just buy it from somebody. This is what's called the Holt coolant. Hybrid organic acid technology. And that's when you're using this car. So after draining it up. I'm putting new stuff in. It's always better to use the 50-50 dilution. That way it always stays 50-50. If you use pure, you don't know what's inside. 50-50 is what you want, so buy it that way. It costs a little more, but what the heck, it works right. Now we have to get the air out of the system, so we're gonna start the car and turn the AC on full blast. Now that makes the AC fan come on, so it'll keep it cool while it's warming up. As you can see, the fan's blowing. And another trick is this. Also turn the heater on full blast. Because then the heater will recirculate and get air out of the heater core, which is hiding inside here. Air can get stuck in there. And as it warms up, add coolant. And we're also going to replace the radiator cap. This is the original one with 200 something thousand miles. The springs will wear out over time. But before you put it on, we let the car warm up to get the air out, but then we let it sit for about 40 minutes. Because then, if there's any air, a lot of times it'll migrate, and you can pour more coolant in. All the way to the top, you can see a bunch of air migrated. Then we're going to start it up again and check it. Then top it up the rest of the way. Keep going until all the bubbles are gone. Then put the top on nice and tight. Uh, the alt cap, it came off real easy, loose. This is nice and tight. You should see it. Now we're going to take it for a good road test. So we'll start it up. Starts right up. And away we go. So away we go on a magical mystery tour. We can see it's staying a little under halfway so far. And away we go. We'll drive it a good half hour on the highway. Well, okay, on the highway. Now we're going to try it in town. So far it's staying good. You want to test it both on the highway and in town, 15, 20 minutes of each. Now as you can see, it stayed pretty much in the middle. But there's one thing I'm worried about now, and that's a possibility with all this overheating since it happened twice, after it was fixed it happened again, it could have damaged the head gasket. So we're gonna let it cool down and do a head gasket test. Put a big fan in front and let it cool down. And in about half an hour we'll do a head gasket leak test to see if the head gasket's been damaged. Well, now we'll turn the fan off and we'll test the head gasket. So we get our block leak test. We'll take the top off and we'll pour in some of the blue liquid. You can see it's blue. We put the top back on. Then we stick it in the radiator, make a vacuum with the pump. Now we start the vehicle, see if it changes colors. If it goes blue to yellow, head gasket's blown. So here we go. As you can see, it's starting to turn. It's not yellow yet, but it's getting yellow. It's not the solid blue that it was before. And what that means is, it's got a small leak. I'm gonna try some sealer, maybe it'll work, 
Maybe it won't. It's got 244,000 miles. It's probably time to say goodbye to this car. Now, even though it ran okay for me, it was starting to lose a little coolant. I had to add some more coolant to it. So that shows it's burning the coolant. Now, I put in some head gasket sealer. You just pour it in. We'll see what happens. Maybe it'll work. Maybe it won't. But it's probably time to say goodbye to this car because I can't say if it blew after the dealer had worked on it or whether it was blown when they had it and they just didn't do a good job and didn't test the system like I did with a block leak test to see if the head gasket had been damaged. Obviously it has some damage. Hey, maybe the sealer will last a while. Who knows? But it was not repaired and diagnosed correctly at the dealer for sure. Because all they had to do is that simple test I just did to see that, mm, well, the head gasket's blowing. And then you wouldn't have put hoses and all kinds of stuff on. You would have just said, okay, it overheated. Why did it overheat? Well, the head gasket's blowing. Do you want to repair it or you want to forget it? Because that was 500 something dollars just wasted, really. But I am trying to seal her. I put in some VARS head gasket sealer. You let it idle for half an hour with the heat and the AC on. Then you let it cool for half an hour and you repeat that six times or so. Let it sit overnight. Then pray a whole bunch that it'll hold up. Now my customer, he bought this car brand new and he loves it. He's got a hundred something thousand miles on it. But last year he took it to a Toyota deal for servicing and they said, you need your rear differential replaced or rebuilt for thousands of dollars and it's unsafe to drive it that way. Trying to scare him into spending all that money. Now my wife's brother, he had one and they tried to ream him in Houston, Texas with a power steering pump. He had it for 10 years. They said, you need a power steering pump. So they ordered it, but it never came or they never called him. Two years later, he was still driving the thing around and had no problems at all. And that was like a $600 repair. This thing would have been thousands. So, not trusting them, they took it to an independent mechanic who said, there's nothing wrong with the rear end or the differential. And this was a year ago. And you needed struts in the back because they're worn out. So, he put the struts on, but he didn't touch the differential. See, it's still the original differential under here. He's got new shocks on the back of springs, but the differential is still the same as it was a year ago. And realize this is a limited all-wheel drive. A lot of them are just front-wheel drive, but this is all-wheel drive front and rear, and they told them the rear diff was going out and it was dangerous. A couple weeks later after that work, they took it to a different Toyota dealer who looked up the paperwork that had been done at Toyota. They got it on computers. And what did they say? It didn't need anything. There was nothing wrong with the differential. Now, these Toyota dealerships were like 20, 30 miles apart. It just shows that just because they're a dealership doesn't mean they're going to treat you honestly, that they're going to give you a fair deal. Now, the second guy granted the Toyota. Whoever owned that Toyota dealership, they were doing the fair thing. But the first dealership, they out and out lied to the guy. Kind of reminds me of when I was back in Houston and that old lady bought the Toyota Tacoma made in Mexico and they hit her for 12 grand more than it was supposed to be sold for and they said, ah, too bad you signed the paperwork. But then after old Scotty made a video on it, the next day she goes in and they gave her a check for $12,000 saying, oh, this was all one big mistake. This is the same dealership that said, there's nothing we can do about it. You signed the paperwork. But after I made the video, magically she got her $12,000 back. Here the owner was very smart. He didn't take their word for it for that kind of money. He went someplace else and found out he didn't need that work done at all. And that's a big deal. That's why you have to not trust anybody these days when you're getting your car worked on if they're trying to sell you expensive stuff. And to me, it kind of amazes me because sometimes I get people go to a dealership and they'll tell them they need $6,500 worth of work. And it'll be on a car that's worth maybe $2,000. I mean, to me, it's just like they're crooks, but they're foolish crooks because nobody's going to spend that money. You'd think they could maybe hit them for $1,000 or $800, but no. They make these inflated prices up, and in this case, they completely made it up. Here we go from the second dealer. They say, inspector drive shafts found a little play, inspected the rear differential and differentials operating as designed. So here we go around, and what do I hear in the rear end? I don't hear anything. There's nothing wrong with the differential whatsoever. Now, of course, if you watch any of my videos, the Toyota Sienna's are really the best vans in the world. There's no arguing that. The only thing that I've ever seen go wrong with them is some of them as they age, the intermittent steering shaft goes bad and you gotta replace it, and it's a thousand something dollar job. 
but this one doesn't have enough mileage for that yet and it's not really worn out. They just basically tried to rip them off for a very expensive differential when it didn't need any work done at all. So realize just because you buy a dependable car it doesn't mean you're not going to get high repairs with dishonest shops. I have seen this happen so many times. I even had a guy come to me once he said, I'm getting rid of my Toyota Corolla. It was the worst car I ever had. I kept having to spend all this money on repairs. So I checked out the car. It turns out that probably none of them ever needed doing. If you got a Toyota Corolla, I've seen them with 300,000 miles. And the only thing I ever done was oil changes and brake jobs. That is it. Some of them didn't even change the transmission fluid and they were still running perfectly fine. So don't let people sell you into things thinking that, oh, I'll take it to the dealer. They do good work and they know what they're talking about. Eh. These guys have millions of dollars of overhead. Who pays it? You as the customer. So they'll just make stuff up and I see it all the time, unfortunately. Usually it's not this bad where they tell you you need thousands of dollars repair on a rear end when there's absolutely positively nothing wrong with it. But still, you ever get a big quote, find somebody who's honest. He was lucky he had an independent mechanic who said no, and then the other Toyota dealer agreed, probably because he found out that the independent mechanic said there's nothing wrong and it would make him look bad if he said yes, the other dealer was right. So you still gotta know somebody who knows what they're talking about, but don't take anybody's word as gospel on any car with any repair, especially a Toyota that doesn't break, unless you have a really serious problem. And even then, you want it analyzed correctly. If you see my video, finding a source of car noises, if you get a device like that that's got four sending units, you put one in different parts of the car, then you put on the headphones and drive it, and you click one, two, three, four sensors, and listen to the noise until you pinpoint where the noise is from. Always have that done if somebody tells you you need something like a transmission or rear end. I've seen it where, Guys wanted to sell a differential for thousands of dollars. It was an axle bearing. The axle bearing was like $40. And yeah, the labor's like maybe $200, but it's not thousands of dollars. So always make sure they're not trying to sell you something that you don't need that's super expensive. Because look at the Sienna. The leather seats are still in good shape. The car's in excellent shape. Why would you want to get rid of a car that runs that good? They were just hoping that they could sell them an expensive repair because they liked the vehicle. I mean, I've seen these things with half a million miles on them, right? And this is like 150, so it's got a lot of life left in it. But they just thought, oh, well, it's so nice inside and everything. Let's see how much they can gouge them for. So if you never want to miss another one of my new car repair videos, remember to ring that bell.